Hello and welcome to Europa Universalist 4. I am Lord Forrent, here with a guide on how to take Artibal, this one province country in, uh, well, the outskirts of Persia, and go on to form Persia. Just to prove it, here's the achievement, Shah Han Shah, start as Artibal and form Persia. It is 1557, and here we go. I'm going to do oh, a quick... Um, I'll show the timeline and then I'll explain what I was doing and why I was doing it. You'll notice there'll be a very rapid gain of land early on. Um, yeah, I beat up Ajam with the help of the Korakunalu and the Mushasha. And then it's going to be a pause, but uh, the hard trick was really um, figure out how to kill off this nation. Mazandaran, uh, they were actually rather difficult to do. kill because they're allied to a lot of strong nations. There also is going to be a very resurgent Timurids here for a little while. Um, I do, did do a silent let's play of this, so you can check it out. Um, essentially, I had to be very reckless at engaging the Timurids. Eventually, when I do fight the Timurids, it is me and Afghanistan versus the Timurids. Um, Artibal has some insane morale stacking. Um, it's almost to the level of Prussia, if you do it right. Um, and they get it rather easily, unlike Prussia, which is late game. So here's the Timurids, and now there's going to be a very large war here. There's also quite a few wars between the Akor Kunlu and Kor Kunlu that you guys may or may not see. Um, annoyingly, the Ottomans were allied to the Akor Kunlu, which made the game a lot harder than it should have been. But um, by the time we ended, we were about... 10 or 12 development off becoming the 8th ranked great power. So we were definitely the largest in the area. Um, pretty crazy. Pretty crazy. The Ottomans went completely crazy invading Europe too. So that also helped. See, there's the victory. That is in fact the provinces you do need to form um, Persia with one exception. I also needed this one province of Amul. And there I got it, and there was unfortunately a very long war here before Mushasha and the Mamluks, but we did it and we won. So, exiting out of this, uh, Artibal starts off as a pretty undeveloped mountain province, and uh, you have two cores. Um, you have a core on Niana, I'm probably saying all these wrong, and Astara. Um, Astara is owned by um, Biapost, which also owns this other province here and almost inevitably will be your rival. There's also this province here which will be owned by Gillian who's likely to be your ally. Um, obviously you should try and regain those cores early on but it's not easy. Now through my experiments I think I think it took me about eight or not no eight or nine legitimate restarts and about 13 or 14 restarts because I figured out a strategy. Um, you have to restart until the core Kunalu here are not hostile to you. They have to either be indifferent or friendly towards you. If they're indifferent, you can immediately get a, a royal marriage with them and then you'll be able to get an alliance. If not, they'll be domineering or hostile towards you. If they are domineering and hostile towards you, restart because otherwise you are going to get killed by them. They will declare war on you a couple months into the game and they will just... They, there's no way you can fight them. Um, I could probably fight them now, but they're a really powerful nation with very strong ideas and a lot of land. So once you've allied yourself to the Korakunalu, the other person to target is the Mushasha down here, who tend to be friends with the Korakunalu. Um, you don't need them to be friends with the Korakunalu, but it helps. Um, once you get an alliance with either of them, you want to wait till either the Timurids declare war on Ajam, which is the nation that existed here at the beginning of the game. It's dead now, by the way. Um, either the Timurids attack it to reconquer all their cores, because they have cores, by the way, on all of this up here. Um, or they don't have a lot of allies, in which case you call the Korkunalu and the Mushasha into the war, promise them land, and don't give them any, essentially. Um, you want to try and take three or four or five provinces if possible. I think I managed to take these five right here, maybe six, I don't remember. And uh, that's enough to make you a moderate-sized nation. The other target you want to go after early on, if you can, is Shravan up here, um, because this has a estuary for trade. Um, it's quite a valuable thing. 
and uh, you can actually be making some insane amount of money from trade. This is actually me from Artibol because I have not let it tick to the next month is Persia, or maybe I did. Uh, I can't remember. Either out, but the majority of my income was coming from trade by the late game. Got to set up your merchants because they're not set up right. You want to steer trade from Basra to Persia and then collect in Persia. Um, what other things to note? Uh, I had to, well, I could have not done so, but I did. I developed both the Renaissance and colonialism in my lands because I wasn't able to expand. Obviously, this could be done faster if circumstances work out. Um, I was stuck for like 30 years doing virtually nothing. Uh, Shirvan is where I developed the Renaissance first because it's a pretty good province to do so. It's a dry land, so you only have a 5% development penalty. Most of the rest of your lands here are all mountains. There are a couple drylands down here that you want to try and snag. And then once I gain this province, Gillian, which took a while, um, it's a grassland, so I developed colonialism in it, and I was in the process of, when the game ended, of developing Tehran here um, into uh, having the printing press. Um, I might continue this into a, try and do a, this is Persia, own Egypt, Anatolia, and Greece as core provinces, but we'll see. Um, next, the step was to figure out how to get over to these ones. So the actual, can I actually find out what the achievement required? Um, I don't think I can. Anyhow, to form Persia, you need to know, own Isfahan, I believe Ardakan or Yads, and Kerman. You also need to own Tehran and Amol, I believe, and you already start um, if you conquer this whole area, you'll also get, I believe, this Quasvin is the other requirement. Which is not hard, and then you just have to be stable, have them as cores, and you can convert. Another thing to note is a lot of this area is in a war between the Shia and Sunni. You are Sunni. Um, that comes with some nice benefits. First of all, the Korokonolu and the Mushasha are also Shia, which means they're your natural allies. And the Timurids being Sunni are your natural rivals. Um, other things is, well, I can't actually show you the uh, Art of Ball ideas, but they're some of the strongest in the game. They are very, very powerful. And overall, in terms of being rather useful, um, they give a starting 10%, 15% uh, national manpower modifier and a 10% manpower recovery, which is absolutely crazy. Um, early on, that is one of the stronger starting ideas I can think of. It allows you to pretty much constantly fight the whole game without having to worry too much about running out of manpower. Um, the next one, I'm looking this up on the wiki, by the way. The Safarid Order gives you 10 morale of armies and negative one monthly piety. Uh, this is rather important because the only way you're going to convert Sunni lands is to be, go towards mysticism and gain that missionary strength. It also has the benefit of also giving you morale of armies and fort defense. So that negative monthly piety, it's really small, but it will tend to make you um, more mystic than legalistic. And that will add, give you um, a bonus morale. I was sat at pretty much 100% mysticism to two or three rulers with that additional 10% morale. And then if you take the 10% from the Safarid order, You've got 20 there. Uh, it's also important to remember Shia automatically has five morale of armies. And you start to realize that Artabal is sitting around 25 morale of armies without taking any idea groups. First thing idea group I took, defensive, so plus 20, 15 there. So we're sitting at 40 bonus morale early on. Um, this kind of covers it. The Persian tradition is just assumed they're the Artabal one. And uh, you start to realize that Artibald can fight enemies that are much, much larger and stronger than you are. I, my war against the Timurids to form Persia, to take these four provinces down here, I think I was outnumbered almost two to one. And most of the fights I was, I think I had 21,000. The Timurids were running around with a 26,000, two 26,000 stacks for a while. Uh, I was pretty free to engage them so long as they weren't on a mountain when I attacked. Um, it was really powerful. The next ideas are the Quizzle Bosch, 15% infantry combat ability. If you keep going, you get plus two tolerance to the true faith. Two missionary strength versus heretics, which allows you to convert all the Sunni land if you haven't already. Um, religious ward, 20% spy network construction. 
negative 10% stability costs, Shahs of Iran plus one year legitimacy, and their ambition is one yearly prestige. So overall, a very good idea group that's heavily weighed towards the beginning. Um, I had the choice between staying with them or going with Persia. After looking them all over, Persia is stronger in the sense that you don't really need the yearly legitimacy. Instead, you get tax modifier and caravan power plus discipline. Um, it all Persia is better. Um, it's pr pretty much Artabal plus other stuff, which is rather cool. Uh, I also went religious ideas. I was hoping to get down to divine supremacy so I could convert things quicker. I didn't need it, but it was useful. And quality ideas was just to make my absurdly strong uh, military even stronger in the long run. Um, it re definitely helped with fighting a lot of the cavalry of the Timurids and the other... Um, whatever these guys are technically called. Oh, they've actually shifted away from it. Um, the tribal tribal confederations who have bonus towards cavalry. Plus you're in the mountains, so got infantry stronger already. Other things to note is uh, Artabal starts off as a feudal theocracy, which is rather cool because you get some missionary strength and additional missionary tolerance of the true faith. And you get the really awesome, um, really strong actually, government abilities. Seize clerical holdings. Negative uh, 15% construction cost is pretty good. The two that are really important are invite a minorities from abroad. Um, negative 20% local development cost reduction, which is really powerful. If you stack with an edict, you're looking at negative 30 already, um, which for the early game is pretty crazy. Plus you get one free development. But the one that's really key is Sanction Holy War. For 50 military powers, get a claim on all non-Shia um, lands, which is very useful if you'll notice. Oh, actually, this has been an actor now because I have all the Persian claims. But I had claims on all of these lands right through here as Artabal because um, they're not Shia. It also allows you to advance north into Shirvan and stuff easier because they're um, Sudanese as well. So those you want to use as much as possible. Your dynasty tends to be half decently good. Obviously re-roll if possible if you're below um, 8 total monarch points. Um, other than that, uh, the other person who's really useful, actually they're gone now, is another Shia school for religion that gives like negative 10% uh, shock damage taken. You automatically start with 10% shock damage combined. Uh, you're really good against nomadic hordes and cavalry armies. Um, the Ottomans actually, if you keep um, improving relations with them, sometimes will be willing to ally you or royal marriage you. Um, that can help in the long run if you're having to deal with an overly strong Timurids or a, or a Kualu. Um, other than that, uh, not much else to these guys. They're very, you want to definitely be as religious as possible. I found developing the institutions was useful because expansion is difficult combined. You're kind of confined by the Timurids, Korakunala, and the Mushasha. I was going to originally expand north, and then uh, I realized that I could probably fight the Timurids one-on-one -on -one with the help of Afghanistan. Um, it's pretty amazing how strong the Timurids are and can become rather quickly. So you want to strike quickly, move, and try and take over the lands you need. At which point you can kind of just be friends with them or at least not fight them. Um, anyhow, that is it for this guide. If you guys have any questions, comments, or opinions about the strategy, um, hopefully they're all nice, uh, I'll be glad to answer them um, down below. And if you enjoyed it, please subscribe, check out my other guide videos, and I'll see you guys all another time. Bye for now.